Alrighty guys, this video in the following series of videos is going to cover what I call advanced selling techniques. So I've been on a little bit of hiatus from really all social media in the past year or so, maybe even two years at this point. And um, what I'm going to do is really throw out all of the advice that I've ever gotten on YouTube about, you know, thumbnails and titles and trying to go viral and all of this crap. And I'm just going to, for the next 20 or 30 videos or so, just post some of the best stuff in my arsenal and really a big portion of my life's work up until this point, which has been on sales and selling, sales process, outbound, inbound, closers, setters, all of that stuff. So um, this is gonna be the first kind of series of that that I'm gonna do. It's called Advanced Selling Techniques. Now, the reason I called that, call it that is because I've published videos in this page before and so on and so forth. Uh, videos you can watch and kind of understand how to sell at a high level, really at the end of 90 minutes or the end of 60 minutes. This isn't really gonna be that. This is gonna be publishing uh, as much, pretty much all of my sales content for the most part and really diving in to a lot of the advanced techniques and stuff that's gonna help you even if you're a beginner just starting off, but even if you're a black belt level salesperson and you just wanna get that 1% better edge, this series is going to cover all of that stuff. And what's really powerful about it is there's a lot of videos you could watch and you can get a script and you can get some questions, whatever. This will really teach you everything that you need to know to have the right underlying philosophy and mindset about selling, which if you could operate from that uh, sense, if you can get the right base, right? The right philosophy opposed to just focusing on the tactics, tactics are important, but if you can get the underlying philosophy and beliefs and mindset and all of that stuff, everything else will start to come much, much more naturally when you're a salesperson. So this video is just gonna cover a quick overview of everything that's included in this series. Uh, I honestly don't even care how many views this series gets. I just think it's important to put it out there. I think it's gonna help a lot of people or at least the people who do watch it. So advanced selling techniques, table of contents. Here's what we're gonna cover right here. This is the video we're at, we're at the overview, okay? We're gonna start by covering sales first principles. That's essentially gonna be the sales philosophy and how to think about selling at a high, high meta level. Then we're gonna chunk it down a little bit and talk about the belief ladder. So the seven beliefs the prospect, a prospect needs to have to buy. And you could really apply this to marketing, sales. It's a framework that I really created from scratch. I created this as I was selling full time as a professional salesperson. And I really loved this idea of if I know I can go to the close with a prospect believing these seven things, which I can establish through my questions, then I'll have an objectionless close, right? I can handle all the objections in advance. I've um, taken care of all of that stuff. I've buttoned up all any of the loose ends, and I know I'm gonna go into the close with minimal resistance. Or if I do get an objection, because I've already established that belief, I just have to reorient them to something they said earlier. It's pretty cool. It's the foundation of really everything I do in selling. It all operates around these seven beliefs. Then we're gonna talk about the inner game of sales. So that's just what it sounds like. Mindset, mental models, et cetera. Then we're gonna talk about subcommunication and tonality, which is the intersection between technique and mindset, mental models, et cetera. That's a very, very powerful training. We'll go into that. Um, obviously, have you ever wondered how can two closers say the same words and get entirely different results? Well, it comes from the subcommunication and tonality, which again, is an intersection between some base level mindset stuff and um, actual technique with how you talk, okay? Then we're gonna talk about the habits of high-performing salespeople. So this is kind of like mindset in a way, but more so like tangible things you need to be doing on a daily basis to essentially perform at a higher level. One of the biggest differences between a closer who's just good and then a closer who is world-class is consistency, right? So habits of high-performing salesperson, I should maybe can change that to habits of a consistent salesperson. Because after all, um, it's really about becoming consistent and having, uh, being able to not have these peaks and valleys like a lot of salespeople do, right? And really trying to smooth that line of performance towards the top. Then we're gonna go over the 50 million sales process overview. I might rename that. I mean, I know, you know, since I've started in my companies, I think we're at 79 million total revenue right now. Maybe I'll call it that. But regardless, this is just gonna be the overview of the sales process. Again, still at a meta, le meta level. I wanna talk about one call close, two call close, three call close, different, uh, you know, depending on your industry, how to adjust the sales process. It's not entirely different. Selling is selling for the most part, but there is different nuances depending on the industry. So we're gonna talk about that sales process overview there. 
It's going to, it's going to kind of incorporate in a lot of what we talked about previously, the seven beliefs, so on and so forth. Then, uh, once we do the overview, we're actually going to dive into the training. So it is going to be one video that essentially goes over the entire sales process. I think doing it in one video just sort of conceptually helps you understand everything that's required. And uh, what I'll probably do either after this video or I'll tack this on at the end is I'll create uh, s different scripts for different industries. So B2B, uh, like, you know, recruiting services, for instance. What about B2C and a, you know, certification or career opportunity, right? Like what if you're helping IT professionals get to the next level in their career? We have a client that does that. What would that script look like? What about health and fitness, right? What about dating? What about, um, you know, lead generation for marketing agencies, like all of the kind of main things that I have run into and really helped sales teams over the years. I want to create separate different scripts for all of those so that uh, hopefully you can get something you can just tell your sales team to watch this video done. Okay. And it'll help you kind of, okay, like we had the philosophy. Now we have the script at a high level. Okay, great. How do I incorporate uh, what, you know, you'll see how the philosophy and the tactics and the words and the exact things to say sort of intersect. Then we'll probably be doing some live sale call, uh, sales call breakdowns, just so you can see me grading these calls real time, okay? Then we'll do a pitch codex. So uh, we'll do the pitch codex. So what that means is the pitch codex is my framework of how to take what you have, like how to take your offer, and then how to communicate that on the phone in a way that's unique, compelling, valuable, et cetera, okay? So, you know, you might've read Alex Ramosi's book, $100 million offers, right? That's how to create your offer but how do you actually explain that on the phone with somebody else? That's what the pitch codex covers. Then we're going to cover what's called the pre-pitch, okay? So the pre-pitch is something I literally just made up years ago. It was one, actually one of the most uh, like kind of viral trainings I put out. was on Facebook back in the day. And the pre-pitch is essentially exactly what it sounds. It's the pitch before the pitch. Now, what that actually is, is a reframe. And so during the transition phase of the call, and you know, just to give you a quick overview, there's introduction, there's discovery, there's transition, there's pitch, there's commitment, there's close, right? Those are the phases. So the transitions before the pitch, during the transition, what we wanna do is we want to reframe the prospect to make sure they believe the beliefs they need to be believed to be true before we actually pitch our services. The idea is, is if we can establish that belief, whatever, it's gonna be different for every single offer. But if we can establish that belief before transitioning into the close, um, your pitch is going to be automatically accepted. It's like the golf tee is the pre-pitch. The golf ball is the pitch, right? And so um, I'll give you some examples later. I don't want to do it right now. But essentially, it's really it, like if I was selling click funnels, it'd be the pre-pitch would sell them on the idea that funnels is the best way to create uh, leads online for a business. And then the pitch itself would be click funnels. So that makes sense. Cool. So live pitch breakdown, again, just kind of giving you, okay, here's what the like scripting philosophy thinking is. Here's how it actually sounds. Objections. All right. So we're going to cover objections at a high level. Like there's only three objections, how, you know, each different objection falls into different buckets, philosophies around objections, so on and so forth. Then we're going to talk about the big three, the money objection, spouse, partner, and then what's called uncertainty based objections, right? I'm going to title it the video. Probably I need to think about it, but uncertainty based objections. Then we're going to go into advanced closing techniques. Okay. So different sort of uh, loops you can do to close, uh, how to close deposits, how to close uh, and set follow-up calls that actually show up and then close. Uh, you know, one of the things that's generally people, I mean, there's probably three broad skills you need to master in sales. There's, uh, you know, beyond the, the met, like, if you, if you get out of certainty mindset, uh, you know, being a high performer, the habit stuff, the right philosophy, the right, all of that stuff. Right. But if you get under the actual tactical aspects, um, there's the discovery and how you ask questions. There's making sure you communicate the pitch properly. And then there's really how you close at the end and how you just nudge people to a commitment. And I can't tell you how many times it's either a lot of times closers will be just Botch the discovery, right? Their questions are terrible, or and they sound robotic, or they're like 99% do everything right until the very, very end, just botch it, right? They just can't hold the person accountable. So uh, we'll talk about how to do that. It's actually pretty easy. It's just something that most people don't know. 
Then we're going to talk about advanced reframing techniques. So if you ever had a prospect who tries to take control of the call during the middle of the call, or like kind of won't follow the process or start throwing up objections before the actual end of the call, right? So like during the call objections. So we'll talk about how to, how to do that. It's like pre-close reframes. Then we'll talk about follow-up. So uh, one of the things I'm really proud to say for me is that when I sold, I was known in our um, company as just the most savage follow-up guy there was. Not because I was just, you know, annoying prospects and being just crazy or anything like that. I just was really good at it. You know, I had a good nuance. I didn't forget people. I, I was able to provide value. I just did a lot of things that were really, really great. And I built this massive kind of book of business and pipeline that I was always able to tap to get deals. And, uh, you know, I was a business owner's dream in the fact that like the calendar could go dry and I could still knock down deals uh, because of how good I was at follow-up. So I'll share all of that stuff in uh, this video that's going to come uh, later. And, and believe me, it's actually probably nothing what you think. Most people do it all wrong. That's why this sucks. So after we get through that, that's kind of the, the major sales training stuff, right? Then what we're going to do is we're going to get to outbound sales, right? A lot of people want to know this. I'm just going to give you everything. So uh, we're going to talk about the two models, MDRs versus SDRs and what the difference is, marketing development reps versus sales development reps. So uh, there's essentially two different ways you could do outbound. And uh, we'll talk about both and you get into it. Um, we're going to talk about basically intent, non-intent, cold, uh, different methods of which you could do it. I'm going to give you scripts, all that stuff. And then we're also going to talk about uh, outbound sales training part two, which is going to be the MDR, or sorry, that's going to be the SDR side. So we're going to start with MDR, then we're going to do SDR, then we'll do some live call reviews there. And then I'm sure along the way, you know, uh, I'm trying to make like a finalized table of contents, but most likely I will change this up. I'll add some videos here. I'll delete some videos. I'll combine them. So this probably won't be the final table of contents, but it's going to be pretty doggone close. And then from after this, I'll either add a little bit more, maybe setter and outbound stuff. I'll add a little bit more uh, live call reviews and kind of reactions to sales calls. Uh, or I'll eventually go into the sales team training, which is okay. This is for, you know, this training is for a salesperson or somebody who's training their sales team who wants to know the right process techniques, et cetera. We'll go from there into actually how do you run and scale a team, which, you know, we've done an amazing job at our, our company's probably pacing, you know, um, it's pacing over 40 million this year. We could maybe do 55. We'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, that's all through phone sales, all cash, not just contracted revenue, you know, bull crap. So yeah, I think this is gonna be really valuable to everybody. I mean, this is stuff I'm passionate about. I honestly don't give a shit about views. Um, I'm not, you know, none of the titles are gonna be optimized for views, thumbnails, they're not gonna be optimized for views. Uh, I don't care. I just want to put out something that's valuable and then something I'm proud of, opposed to just trying to pander to the algorithm like 99.99% of people. So that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you in the next video, which is gonna be called Sales First Principles. See you then.